As everyone knows from the perspective of humans, time only moves in one direction, and it's incredibly hard to predict the future. In 2008, a strange book called The End of Days was published. In this book, a page reads, in around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Does this sound familiar? The book also reads, almost as baffling as the illness itself is the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it has arrived. Attack again 10 years later, and then disappear completely. Can this information be perceived as a strange coincidence? Or is this an actual prediction? Written by the American author named Sylvia Brown, this book raises many questions. People on social media believe that actually two authors named Sylvia Brown and Dean Koontz had predicted the outbreak of the deadly disease, coronavirus. Back in 2008, and even back in 1981, Sylvia was an American author who claimed to be a medium with psychic abilities. She appeared regularly on television and radio, including on The Montel Williams Show and Larry King Live, and hosted an hour-long online radio show on Hay House Radio. But could she have actually predicted such an event? In December 2019, the World Health Organization says a mysterious pneumonia is sickening dozens of people in China. It was also claimed that many of those sickened had visited a live animal market in Wuhan, China. Shortly after, in January 2020, China declares the first death of a 61-year-old man who had visited the live animal market in Wuhan. The novel coronavirus outbreak, which had begun in December, had expanded to touch nearly every corner of the globe. Hundreds of thousands of people around the world had been sickened and thousands of others have died. For the sixth time in history, the World Health Organization declared a public health emergency of international concern. The designation reserved for extraordinary events that threaten to spread internationally admits the ongoing fear of the World Health Organization who, declaring like, this new revelation had started making waves online. Whether or not you believe in psychics, it's hard to doubt what Brown predicted after seeing how in 2009 the H1N1 swine flu had spread. And then, 10 years later, in 2019, how the CV-19 had spread throughout the world. But how much truth does this claim hold? The Eyes of Darkness is a thriller written in the year 1981 by suspense author Dean Koontz. In this book, he talks about a virus that was created by the Chinese military in a lab located in Wuhan as part of its biological program. The author chose to name this virus Wuhan 400. In the story, this deadly virus had been called a perfect weapon, as it only affects human beings. Surprisingly, it also tells that the virus can only survive in a human's body and not on any other surface. Moreover, Wuhan 400 does not require an extensive contamination process. Another thing that raises the question is that the live animal market where CV-19 first broke out is just 32 kilometers away from Wuhan Institute of Virology. But until now, there's no actual proof C-19 had been created in a laboratory. Some scientists outside China have studied the virus's genome in detail and concluded that it emerged naturally rather than from a lab. Kristen Anderson, a virologist at Schweppes Research in La Jolla, California says, We have a lot of data showing that this is natural, but no data or evidence to show that there's any connection to a lab. If we look at some more references of the virus in the book, it says that Wuhan 400 has a kill rate of 100%. The author further mentioned that the virus can engulf the brain tissue, leading to the loss of control of bodily functions in the patient's body. Also, it is characterized by symptoms like loss of pulse, organ failure, and loss of breath. However, the CV-19 disease has a much lower kill rate, and it is characterized by a series of other symptoms, including fever, shortness of breath, coughing, etc. In severe cases, it can cause pneumonia, kidney failure, or even death. Dean Koontz mentioned in the book that Wuhan 400 is infinitely worse than Ebola. But in reality, is the CV-19 as fatal as Ebola? Scientists say Ebola is not easily transmittable. Infected people don't spread the virus until they start showing symptoms. This is a striking difference from CV-19, which, as far as we know, it can be spread without any symptoms at all. Even when people get sick, some people might have symptoms so mild 
that they're not sure they have CV-19 in the first place. So, is it true that these writers actually predicted the coronavirus? Brown's career as a prognosticator, for example, saw a number of highs and lows. While she was celebrated for a number of predictions, she also was criticized for others. But some reports suggest Sylvia Brown was actually a psychic. Brown gained notoriety for her claims that she could predict the future and communicate with spirits. But she was also the subject of criticism for offering the grieving parents of missing children false information. This is extremely strange and forces us to think if some writers can actually predict what's going to happen in the future. Though there are some discrepancies between what has been mentioned in these two books and the actual virus, we cannot deny the fact that some coincidences in the book are uncanny and really spine-chilling. The legacy of this is not going to be health. It's going to be economic. And we're just about to see the scale of that. What they've done is destroy independent businesses and uh, independent employment with those businesses of vast numbers of people. Nothing even like what's coming. And look who's taken the brunt of it. Not the major corporations, not the Amazons who have benefited enormously from it, but small businesses, medium businesses. With the lockdown, basically smacked them around the head with a baseball bat by shutting them down. And now they're opening or giving the opportunity to open some of them, those that haven't gone out of business in the meantime. And what they're actually doing symbolically is having hit them around the head with a baseball bat, they're now letting them bleed to death. Because the regulations, the impositions on business means they simply can't get the throughput because of all the social distancing and regulations, they can't get the throughput to make a profit and, and survive. And so they're going to be falling and falling and falling. And with everyone that falls, more people are falling into the lower strata of the Hunger Games Society. This is why the 1% people, they're talking about a universal guaranteed income, but they're not doing it out of altruism. They're doing it because part of the control system because it will come with strings. You can get your meager guaranteed income only if you do what you're told. They are planning to transform human society from what we've known, and I was born in 1952, I remember the world that was nothing like it even is now, nothing like. They want to transform it into what you would think of now as a sci-fi movie because the same people, the same cult that's behind all that's going on now, they are the same force that is in the midst of uh, moving towards connecting AI to the human brain. Connect you, your brain to AI and you'll become superhuman, you'll become like the gods. No, you'll become subhuman, not superhuman. You'll become posthuman, that's the idea. Once the um, AI is connected to your brain, AI will do more and more of human thinking until human thinking as we know it now is negligible and basically disappears. At that point, the human mind will be the AI mind. Up to this point, they've had to manipulate perception to dictate behavior. Their end game is to not even have to manipulate perception, but to become the perception via AI. And that's the point where you become the hive mind, where individuality is deleted. And that's where this is going with the mask, taking away individuality on the, what I call the totalitarian tiptoe to that end. And uh, the whole transhumanism is to replace the human. So what we call human just becomes literally a computer terminal on an AI internet of this cult and the force that's behind the cult. Up to 2030, and I'm being very optimistic with 2030, where we are going to decide the future because the idea is to introduce autonomous vehicles for everything. So you don't drive a vehicle anymore, it drives you. And the computer driving it will make sure that you can't go anywhere the system doesn't want you to go. So there's even more control. And anywhere you do go, the system will know absolutely everything about where you are. Every conversation in the car will be accessible, etc., etc. And of course, 
you can't have an autonomous car that runs with a petrol engine. So it has to be electric. The whole system has to be electric. So what they've done is they've introduced this other hoax called human caused climate change, which allows them to centralize power and uh, dictate from the center to save the world. You look at what the centralization of power because of the and the centralization of power because of the human caused climate change, we must save the world and the same forces behind both. And of course, the human caused climate change is a massive woke agenda and they've orchestrated that woke mentality to push it through Extinction Rebellion and all these things. But to save the planet, we must go to electric cars. It's nothing to do with save the planet. It's making that transition from the petrol engine to the electrical system, which becomes the autonomous vehicle. Those autonomous vehicles are coming down the line very fast, which is why I say this, this interim period of a drivable electric car is going to be quite short in their plans. And all over the country now, they are changing the nature of the motorway system, what you call the freeway system in America. And they're calling them smart motorways. And they're changing them in ways that are dangerous. And people can't, why are they doing that? It's so dangerous. They're changing the system of the road system of Britain for autonomous cars. That's why they're doing it, not for vehicles that we have now.